Let me see. Okay. So first of all, two things. Um, in case I forget, I decide to put this in the, in the very beginning because I'm always forgetting. Even though I will be um, walking through the code and uh, do typing type of thing, uh, I would like to you to have something so you can get, you know, get in your happy place and try to, to replicate the same thing. So essentially, I prepared this. Uh, it's called playbook, like you essentially can go and uh, uh, go step by step things that I'm going to be showing you today. Um, and you will always uh, can return to this URL, it's NYC Kafka workshop. Um, and if you're interested uh, in, uh, so the way how it looks like. <clears throat> it's looks, it looks like this. So essentially step by step thing, you're creating um, the prerequisites, how you're starting app. Maybe sometimes I will be, you know, <laughs> going back here. So if I will, again, keep forgetting something. Um, working version of this application, current version of this application is on uh, GitHub. So uh, the short link for here is the nyc-kafka-code. It's gamov.dev. Uh, uh, that will bring you this GitHub page uh, where you can get source code. But um, hopefully we will be able to build this uh, uh, from scratch within uh, what like one hour ish we have all right so before um, before I jump in here so let me quickly bring the slides I don't have a slide so let me uh, where's the slide okay I will Briefly disconnect real quick. I'll bring the next slides and um, we'll continue. So essentially, the things that Sean just said, uh, it also like resonates with me very well, especially part when he said like, as a developer, I don't care about infrastructure. I don't care about infrastructure. You know, I want to write my code. I write my, you know, the, the Spring Boot applications. I want my write my Java application, my Kotlin applications. I don't really care much about uh, infrastructure because I am a developer. Though I have empathy and I have a, a lot of respect for people who are supporting this infrastructure, so I also hang out with infrastructure people. So this is not the talk where I need to be infrastructure guy. This is the talk where I need to be a developer guy. Um, if uh, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Victor. I work at Confluent, um, do a lot of stuff, a lot of exciting stuff. Um, Enjoying to talk to developers, enjoying to talk operators, people. I enjoy to talk architects. Um, in the past, I was developer of the kit. Uh, in the past, I was a solutions architect. I, now I'm developer of the kit. Um, and uh, usually, I'm talking about all things streaming, about Kafka. Just give me one second. I will uh, try to show you a couple things. Uh, <clears throat> So let me quickly run this. Okay, so um, I work, as I mentioned, I work at the Confluent and uh, in Confluent, we have uh, our distribution of Apache Kafka that we call the Confluent platform. Uh, it's not only uses some of the open source bits, but also includes some of the uh, freely available components that you can use that have, um, that creates a complete platform, and I will explain in a couple more, um, couple more minutes. I will explain what's the complete platform. So we build all things around Kafka and streaming platforms. We build the productivity tools. We build uh, tools that allows operators to successfully perform their jobs. We build tools that allows developers to develop their apps. Uh, we do uh, training. We do services. We do a lot of things around around Kafka. Also, we take this money that we're getting from our customers and invest this to open source community. We uh, support uh, development of Apache Kafka in open source. We employ developers uh, and we um, running this, help to run this process. So <clears throat> in the core of, the, uh, of our Confluent platform, it's obviously uh, Apache Kafka, which is distributed uh, event driven uh, streaming platform, distributed uh, streaming platform. The um, couple, Things that um, developers and users of Kafka realize quickly: um, Kafka is uh, so um, 
it is it is it is like a like a Unix pipe. It's quite powerful though. It is it doesn't have like enough to some of the tools that allows you to have a complete platform. So things around uh, management of uh, of information that you're putting there. So sometimes you need to have the, the, some of the agreements, some sort of contract between different teams, especially in microservice worlds, if they need to exchange some of the data, some of the information. So we need to develop some sort of uh, contract or schema. So we have this uh, freely available uh, component called the schema registry, which is a REST interface um, that uh, comes with a certain set of tools. For example, it comes with serializers for your Java apps, for your streams apps. Um, and schema registry provides the interface where uh, different teams can collaborate around the schema. We support Avro at this moment, but we're working on supporting some other popular serializations format. Uh, the huge point here of uh, having kind of like contract first or, or schema first is that um, you don't need to um, standardize on certain language because uh, the Avro support available in multiple different languages. So you can use the schema as your universal language to talk to different teams about what kind of data we're going to be sending around. So um, for a very long time, uh, Kafka Streams is a Java tool, uh, was number one tool that people are using to write stream processing application because it has everything. It has ability to write uh, stateful stream processing applications and stateless uh, stream processing applications. You can write complex aggregations, uh, complex uh, logic, you can write different routers, and it has very nice Java API. So the, here's the thing, but not everyone, it's, uh, it's surprise, 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 but uh, not everyone, uh, knows Java or wants to know Java or maybe Scala or maybe Kotlin, I don't know. Um, people tend to know SQL. So we were thinking uh, like, I guess the first time the case SQL was announced uh, the three years ago, almost like three years ago in Kafka Summit, uh, San Francisco. So the idea is to provide a streaming SQL interface for Apache Kafka. So your applications is actually your, uh, your, your queries that written in, in the SQL suite. You don't need to think about how this would be compiled down to Kafka Streams the polls. You don't need to think about this, how this will be running. You think about this as an engine that allows you, bless you, that allows you to run uh, this continuous queries. And uh, the recent releases where there's some powerful features that allows you even um, have a two types of queries, continuous queries and pull queries, meaning that kind of like a point in time queries, right? So when you have a, some state, we can query the state immediately. Also, um, many, uh, many times when I talk in the, to, to people and uh, doing th this type of presentations, people asking, oh, how I can join the data in Kafka and the data in my database? So this is where uh, Kafka Connect uh, comes into play. Uh, Kafka Connect is a part of uh, Apache Kafka platform. It's a, it's a framework, it's a runtime where your connectors are managed. And we, uh, as a company, we set the last year goal that um, we see a huge, 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 huge potential in this framework. So we're saying, okay, what about we go and develop like 100 connectors? just for any possible database, any possible source, any possible system that will be, we will be able to connect. So, and essentially, if you want to see how did it go, you can go to this, um, we call it app stores for connectors, or I call it app stores for connectors. Uh, it's a confluent io slash hub, and uh, just uh, name any database, anyone. Cassandra, okay. So let's see. Cassandra double S. There are two connectors for Cassandra. One is uh, Kafka Connect Cassandra, and there's data stack uh, connector for Cassandra. Anything else? Any? MySQL. Too easy. Something else. Here we go. So we do have a, the connector that connects the DynamoDB and AWS and things like that. So you can play around with this uh, exercise and go and check out uh, yourself the plenty of connectors. So this is something that we do as a company. We build this connector. Some of the connectors open source. Some of the connectors are proprietary. Some of the connectors freely available but require some of the license uh, and so forth and so on. Based on the Kafka Connect infrastructure, we think that, okay, now, we have a connectors that allows you connect to different systems back and forth, but what about connect 
to Kafka clusters or three Kafka clusters, etc. So using this infrastructure, we also build this uh, uh, product that allows you to um, do replication between multiple uh, clusters. Uh, it's called Replicator, duh. Uh, naming is hard. Um, so Replicator is um, a, a tool that allows you to um, finely tune the, what kind of data you want to move back and forth. So there is a uh, Mirror Maker tool as part of open source Apache Kafka. Mirror Maker has certain limitations that we try to um, solve in Replicator. Now, so apart from this, there is a small interesting and cool features like a REST proxy that allows you to communicate with Kafka through REST. Um, we support and uh, continue development of multiple um, um, native libraries for, for certain languages, for example, Go client, uh, .NET, uh, C, uh, which is uh, LibRD Kafka, which is also uh, very powerful, and the, the LibRD Kafka essentially is a foundation for many uh, clients that you know uh, uh, need to communicate to Kafka natively. Um, Apart from that, we do have a Confluence CLI. I will show Confluence CLI, which is a pretty cool thing that allows you to uh, work as a developer and like do things uh, very, very quickly. And now uh, we um, finally released the uh, Confluent operator, which was um, which was like very interesting journey. It's it started from um, from um, for those of you who don't know, we also run the best managed service in the cloud called Confluent Cloud, which is managed Kafka, managed Schema Registry, managed KSQL. So it's awesome, managed connectors. Now, when we started doing this, Kubernetes was like very, very young. There are many things that were not that pretty. Um, so we have to come up with some of the uh, automations around this. This is where the concept of the custom controllers came into play. Uh, so we start extending some of the Kubernetes APIs, the things that Sean already mentioned, um, defining some of the domain specific things around the Kafka rather than dealing with these small building Lego blocks. We start dealing with actual things that we care. So we need to build Kafka clusters in the different regions. So we, we need to come up with this um, automation way how we can do this. So the operator was a uh, brainchild of uh, this, this process. But for a very long time, this operator was a part of our kind of like know-how in the cloud. So many clients start coming to us and saying, hey, so we do have this uh, thing, uh, Kubernetes, you probably heard about this, and we would like to use the same experience that we have in the cloud, but you know, we have certain requirements that not allow us to run this in, in the public cloud. We want to have our own data centers because we already, over the years, we bought a gazillion of uh, computers and our management wants us to you know, use it. So this way we can bring the Kubernetes here and uh, we can still um, run internal, internal clouds. And uh, this is how the, the Confluent operator comes into play. We get this experience that we gain in the cloud and we ship it as a, as a part of, um, of, the, of the product. So this is uh, essentially like very brief overview of the platform, things what we do, and um, um, you know, how it how it's can be done. Any questions so far? Just a really quick question. Yes. Just uh, for now, yes. So we just uh, committed the support for uh, JSON schema and the protopuff. Um, right now, it is not part of release, but it's already in master. Um, so you can go and try this out again. But like we will announce, well, the other formats will be available. So it's a uh, couple, couple more, I would say, month, and uh, other formats will be there. All right. So um, and uh, we're going to be focusing on Avro today. So. It's um, um, so the the cool thing about like we just discussed about these um, different distributions that are available not only uh, on prem but also in cloud. Even though Kubernetes is a Kubernetes and Kubernetes provides a standard API, um, and you can feel that okay, so I have my container, I package these containers once, so I can essentially run this everywhere, um, and it is true. However, even though there is a standard APIs and standard um, so ways how uh, different platforms, PKS uh, the, and others uh, doing things, um, there still requ requires some of the some of the things that needs to be done the native way. So that's why one of the things that we put into work when we are working on the operator thing is to make sure that 
the users will have similar experience if they will move around um, into different uh, different installations. Um, we start working with PKS very early. Uh, the Pivotal was a huge partner with our journey here when we're doing this uh, the Kafka integration on uh, Kubernetes and PKS. We work on this. Maybe heard someone heard about this like open source Helm charts where we're providing like deployment instructions. Uh, we work closely on developing and providing experience um, that would be. But what people expect from PKS and the Kafka operator. So um, we, we, we certified on PKS. So if uh, I think right now we also working on the ways how we can integrate this in uh, Cloud Foundry, but today uh, Kafka is running on PKS and we're going to be focusing on this one. Um, so the architecture of today's application. Um, Sean briefly uh, introduced the concept of operators and how it will be run in, in Kubernetes and how we're going to be doing this in, um, in Cloud Foundry. So uh, this is essentially um, the cluster of Kafka deployed into PKS and uh, we will be deploying our apps into uh, PASS and we'll communicate through this. Uh, I guess you were asking, yeah, we were using just like user-defined service and we inject some of the uh, URLs. When application will start, we inject these properties into configuration of application. <clears throat> Any questions so far? Artificial intelligence. Yeah, no, the application is. Application is. <laughs> I, I don't know, like people talking about AI. Okay, so <laughs> I, I, I was thinking like everywhere, if you just put AI, it would be kind of like a cool thing that uh, investors will bring some money. So I think <laughs> this is where, um, okay, so application instances, cool. All right. I guess uh, you live, you learn, right? Um, so essentially, we can focus. We can switch to um, we can switch to our thing. So, if you want to follow, uh, feel free. Uh, you can just uh, get everything, or you can read this and uh, follow along in this um, in this playbook. And after that, you can ask um, some questions if you have from from this thing. Uh, as always. Um, we starting like where 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 do we start like where do we start uh, our application developer these days? So there's two places that every developer wants to wants to be. First one what? Start It's the second place. <laughs> First place it's production, but second place start that spring that I O right. If you restless and you can get sleep, start the spring dot I O. Does anyone get a reference except you? Yeah. All right. How, how many of you heard about Josh Long? You guys. Josh Long, anyone? Yeah. All right. So, start the Spring.io. This is where we start, right? Say again? There's also Julian, Julian Uh Yes, the Jurgen, he's, uh, he's, he's, he's the Jurgen, yeah. yeah. Um, so, Essentially, like if you didn't get a reference about the start of Spring Boot, just Google Josh Long speaking about Spring Boot a video on YouTube. That's entertaining and it's it's funny. So, uh, best place to start because um, we have a Java library that comes with Kafka that allows you to read data into Kafka, write data into Kafka. We do have. Um, Kafka Streams, which is also part of uh, open source Apache Kafka, that you can get this and start writing apps. However, even though I, as I said, oh, as a developer, I like, uh, I, I like to write the code. I like to write the code that is important. So I don't like to write like a ceremony code, like all this kind of uh, the, the public, st yeah, public static void main type of thing and stuff. So um, over the time, over over some times that. Um, I realized that it's okay, like if you don't need to, if you don't know like every possible, um, uh, you know, method in the API, um, and you rely on some wrapper libraries. And I think right now, in terms of like user experience and developer experience, you can love Spring, you can hate Spring. Some people, oh, I hate Spring. It's like so too much magic. Come on, 
guys, we having very good salaries as a software engineers, you know, we can handle this magic, right? So if we need to figure out something, we can go and look to the code, so this is why I believe the Spring gives like a very good experience in terms of developing um, application. And especially the good thing about this, because there's a native support for this. So if I go here and I search for dependencies that um, part of um, Spring, we have Spring for Apache Kafka, which is we're going to be using, doing Kafka, uh, Spring for Apache Kafka streams. So doing Kafka. Uh, cloud stream. Spring Cloud Stream is a, it's a very interesting beast that we're going to be talking about um, in a couple more slides. Um, again, I like to focus on the code that is kind of like the, the actually makes me efficient. So uh, using Lombok as well. And uh, we will be using Web Starter because it's going to be a web application, right? Uh, as always, we're doing um, io.confluent.developer and uh, you know what the cool thing if you will take this and type it in the kind of it's a polyndrome that's also useful if you type developer.confluent.io there will be a pretty cool website where you can basically learn all things uh, that you want to learn about uh, Kafka and this is your landing page where you want to learn about, say, stream processing. There's a Kafka tutorials that you can go and learn how you can do joint streams and table together. And you get like a full blown tutorial where you can get a step by step things and uh, just go and follow this one. So developer, it's, it's a third place there you want to be at the production, start.spring.io and uh, developer.confluent.io. All right, get it, get it, nice. All right, so uh, we go in this, uh, let's call it Kafka Workshop. Um, yeah, we will use Maven, that's okay. Uh, we'll use this one, it's also okay. A, yeah, war, a jar, Java 8, it's okay, that, that will be fine. Um, so a couple things here. So we get this, uh, the basic project. Um, and if I will go there. Um, Kafka workshop. Oh, too many, too many things. Okay, let me do this again. Uh, Kafka dash workshop. Oops. Uh, because a different director, okay. H R F. You probably figure out I already done this few times, so that's why I have a few things. Say again. You're not doing your full. Uh, yeah, I'm just you know fully you know nuclear here. Just uh, move is for I don't know. <laughs> this is not our. This is not our way, right? Okay, so again, because like everything that we're doing here, again, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not coding. I'm just approving the code completion. So this is what I do essentially. So, and uh, there's plenty of stuff. So um, another thing that you probably will be learning today, something cool. I learned this. I just blew my mind. Um, you don't actually need to run this uh, uh, Maven clean install every time. If you run this Maven verify. It actually would be much more uh, better, and the verify is actually um, will check if some of the code requires to be uh, recompiled or whatnot. So, do not use Maven clean install. Use verify. Okay. So let's take a look. What do we have here? Just can't wait when I get a new computer that allows me to, you know, run more Google Chrome tabs um, and more um, Slack windows and more 
IntelliJ IDEA windows. So, um, so cool thing about um, Spring, uh, uh, Stardust Spring IO, it actually gives you a very nice experience in terms of bringing right version of the framework, or right version of the libraries, uh, or right version of dependencies. So you already have um, have this this kind of things here. Um, so, a couple of things that we need to add. This is where we go in, into my into my uh, playbook. Um, we're going to be using Scheme Registry. We're going to be using Avro. We're going to be using um, uh, um, the serializer, deserializer. So this is why we need to bring these dependencies in. So this is why I need to go here. Where we can grab these dependencies? These dependencies are in uh, Confluent Maven repository, so we need to also uh, bring this repository there. Also, uh, since I mentioned that we're going to be doing this thing called uh, the contract, kind of sort of contract, but not like a, the spring contract sense. Um, so we will take schema-driven development. We'll take a schema, we will generate Java classes out of it, and we will just continue to, to work with it. So that's why um, we need to have the plugin that will be able to um, read the schema and generate uh, appropriate, um, appropriate things. So I will go ahead and just grab these dependencies from here. Dependencies, I will copy dependencies here. So where's my dependency section? So we're here. <coughs> uh, I guess I, I grabbed something, uh, something wrong. Oh, interesting, let me see if it's a IntelliJ idea playing around. Yeah, until JD playing around with me. Next, dependencies, dependencies. It's extra stuff. Uh, okay, it's updated. Next, we're copying the uh, things around uh, repositories. Um, so let me hide this one and I will switch back to this one. So, the good, always good idea to have. Um, some sort of like a local uh, Java Java repository like Artifactory or um, Nexus for that matter that allows you to have uh, the stuff that locally cached. Um, and we're getting this uh, plugin here. <coughs> so we do have a Spring Boot plugin. We'll put this next to it. Um, Spring, uh, we need to create this Avro folder, otherwise this plugin will be screaming at me. Um, directory called Avro. Um, and after that, uh, what kind of command we need to run? Maven, Maven. Good stuff. All right, um, let's see if uh, things that I just uh, copy pasted uh, works fine. Voila, things are still working. now. So the next thing that uh, once we have everything, um, as always, we need to check if we do have um, uh, here, where's the Maven window? We'll just refresh if uh, IntelliJ IDEA brings all these dependencies. So we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be using very simple, yeah, as you can see, all these like jars, like this fat jars here. So many, so many jars, amazing, I love it. So. The, we're going to be focusing on the two microservices. Uh, one microservice will have a REST interface, and uh, this is our kind of like a producer application. Uh, the producer application will write data into um, into into Kafka, which will be uh, you know reading data from um, from POST request, turn this into Avro because most likely our like JavaScript people or our like curl people don't know anything about Avro. So we will do this uh, for them uh, because we need to have, um, we will have another application that will do some processing. So in this case, Kafka will be our like uh, uh, lending area where we're getting data from one place and store it so the other uh, microservices will be able to process it, right? So, um, uh, going, going next. In um, let's talk about schemas, right? So this is um, this is where uh, things uh, might get very interesting. 
let's do file to call it user.avsc uh, which is stands from I guess Avro schema right okay now this is how our schema look like. Um, there's another definition, but we're not gonna um, we're not gonna uh, use this one because the JSON is kind of human readable, and this is something that you can go and communicate with other teams, regardless if they're using Java or whatnot. Um, uh, we explicitly, uh, if it's uh, um, if we need to deal with particular language and the th how the things are handled in particular language, okay. Now, um, so this is why this is why we have this thing. So usually the, the workflow looks like this: uh, the schema is generated, and these jars are published somewhere because Java has this kind of like a two steps. You need to have a compile time uh, the classes if you're using your application, and you need to have it in runtime. So for compile time and the runtime, you would use this like a jars as a dependency. It can be published again in Artifactory, um, and after that you can use this. Um, um, you can use these classes in any other applications. If other uh, languages that don't have this concept of compilation, uh, they need to deal with runtime schema. For example, in um, say you're doing with, with Go, right? Uh, you can uh, extract the schema from schema registry, and after that, read message from the Kafka, and after that, on the runtime, generate this uh, dynamic uh, dynamic object here. So this is the uh, this is the cool part. Now. Any questions so far? Okay, so um, uh, obviously it's a Spring Boot. We will just copy this one as well. Uh, we need to only this part. I will show you uh, some of the things that uh, that you might need. So, couple uh, couple cool things. Um, as I said. Uh, I need to approve some of the code completion. This is how I code. Okay, 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 uh, okay, okay. Approved, approved. Okay, now it's, it looks nice. Um, uh, I can do enable. Um, Kafka, but I guess the Spring Boot is uh, smart enough right now to figure out that I need to use Kafka because it found the Kafka jars in class path. But uh, it's always good to be explicit. Now, couple things here. Um, as a good uh, citizen in the Kafka world and a good citizen in uh, you know the good citizen for your operations people, um, you don't want to have uh, auto creation of topics uh, enabled uh, by default on your Kafka cluster production. What does it mean? So um, there's configuration that allows you when the first time when accessing certain topics, it, if this topic was not uh, existed, Kafka can create this. Regardless if you're doing the consumption, if you're doing production there, um, this is a bad thing. Because every time you're doing typo and you're seeing, um, okay, so you're doing like user one, user two, user three, you can just pollute your environment with like a bunch of nonsense topics and operations people are getting crazy. So this is why you don't want to do this. Though you need to be very explicit when you're creating your um, uh, creating your topics. As an application developer, you need to bring your topics and configuration, same way as you brought your, I don't know, like a schemas and tables and other stuff, you need to bring uh, uh, topic configuration. So essentially, with Spring, um, it's uh, very easy to do. In my application, I will be using just the one topic that I will be in. You can use the same topic. We're going to be uh, looking to the configuration in a bit. Um, Topi has a three properties, name, replication factor, and number of partitions. Um, and once we will creating this uh, bean with type new topic, um, it, this is, would be signal for Spring to instantiate the, uh, the, the class called admin API. So admin API is the right way to deal with creating topics and, and whatnot. Though, um, we don't see any talk about admin API here. So you're just defining. It's kind of like a mix of this declarative approach. Spring will make it happen for you as well. So in this case, um, the Spring Boot will find this bin with new topic. It will instantiate admin client. It will connect to Kafka cluster that we'll be providing in configuration. And after that, it will um, execute this uh, new topic creations on this um, on the Spring on on. Um, you got the idea. Uh, producer. So now, how we can write this data into um, into Kafka? Super, super simple. Um, 
we were discussing about uh, different abstractions layers. Um, I would say let's do another one. Um, like before, I guess, I guess with Omar, we discussed a little bit about <laughs> different layers of abstractions. Um, you can just use uh, this uh, uh, the producer injection and inject this directly to uh, to your application code. I like to have a service, and after that, injecting this service into my REST controller. So in this case, I'll have a separation, and I can test this separately. So uh, you might have, I might have like a different Kafka template for. Um, um, uh, for, for, for local testing. Um, another thing that, um, like I said, I like to write code that actually would be meaningful. So I will do required arguments constructor and this stuff will go away. So uh, this is where people say, oh, there's some sort of magic and stuff like that. Yeah, there's a little bit of magic called Lombok. Lombok is a annotation processor that will generate some of the code during compilation time. So in this case, again, we're using machines to do work for us. If you get paid for lines of code, knock yourself out. So essentially, um, this is it. This is one class that you need to have uh, in order to produce a data in the Kafka topic. How many of you heard about like the templates in general as a, as a design pattern? So the templates, it's a like, very popular concept in the Spring world. There's a JDBC template, there's a Rabbit template, there's a Kafka template. Hey, um, and Kafka template is actually encapsulate and uh, actually mirrors a lot of methods of producer. So it still feels like you're dealing with the, it's a very lightweight, uh, though it provides um, uh, automatic configuration. So, uh, yeah. Um, so, you can create multiple templates, or you can use one template and just do not use uh, this like a type, um, do not use generic things. So just use a raw Kafka template because it will be checking the types when you do send. It will be checking the, what kind of type of message you will be sending. Um, I would say uh, since it is kind of the spring type of thing, and template, I need to check like if te template is actually a singleton or it's a. Uh, or it will be creating like every instance every time. I think it's it's okay you have multiple templates for different topics or for different type of data. It will have your code much you know m much more understandable. So you would say that okay. So we're producing the topic where our key is string and value would be user. So I think it's 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 okay. <clears throat> All right. Uh, as you can see here, we're using dependency injection. We will extract this information from our configuration file. Now, um, let's do consumer. Oh, shoot. Uh, rename. Consumer. Con consumer. All right. So with consumer, it actually follows a very different pattern. and. Uh, uh, also very well known in uh, in the Spring world. Uh, let me do quick uh, approval of my code completion. Uh -huh. Import, import, and import user. Cool. No. No. So. Um, if you ever work with any messaging system within Spring, maybe it was JMS, maybe it was Rabbit, um, Spring has this concept of uh, like a, the listener container. So there's a, a special wrapper that uh, handles kind of like multi-threading for you. Only one thing that you need to define is saying, hey, this is message listener. Um, this is what logic that I want to execute. And you, as a container, provide all these capabilities to me. Um, and voila, this is how we can do this in, um, this is how we can do this in, uh, in, in the Kafka world. This is how we can bring stuff um, into this. This is essentially, this is, only thing that you need to write if you just need to listen from Kafka topic. If you ever write um, um, the consumer application, you need to know that there is a while loop because, I don't know, like it, how many of you knew that like if the shark, like shark, baby shark or mommy shark will stop moving, it will die. Yeah, I, yeah, I was blown away. So here, here's the thing. 
consumer is like a shark. If this like while loop will stop, like if you stop doing things in while loop, um, consumer will be kicked out from the consumer group that will cause like consumer group rebalance and why not. So this why um, it is um, consumer leave in this like a while loop. But here you don't see it because this, uh, this practice, this best practice code already implemented by uh, Spring, team, uh, Spring team and uh, it provides you with uh, like uh, just a listener that allows you to focus only on logic. Yes. This talk to the, talk to the, you know, the one problem with this type of code is that if you, instead of native, native Kafka code, sometimes you have a use case where you want to go somewhere in the middle sort of thing. Like? So probably this, so at that time, we, you have to revert back to the native Kafka sort of thing. Don't be despair. Uh, yeah, you can inject actual instance of consumer. You can, you can inject instance of consumer here. And you can do whatever Kafka code uh, is uh, you doing. So it's 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 like same thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. What's what do you have in mind? So what happened is that I had a use case basically where uh, in response to an in, in response to a REST service call, you have to go into the middle of the say offset. You got offset. And then Why? You go to the offset. Then it was a use case that to do what? From the offset, you have to get the messages. Let's talk about this because it sounds like some sort of anti-partner you're talking to me right now. Well, we, we, let's talk about this because, like, I love to 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 change people's minds. So, um, <laughs> like, every time when the person says, like, I need to like interject in some sort of like uh, already kind of like defined, very well defined workflow, I think maybe there is something, yeah, or maybe this person is up to something. Already from the very beginning, it is assumed that you have you start getting from the beginning. Sort of. Yeah, yeah. So there is a ways. Uh, it's like opinionated ways. You need to dig a little bit into um, into documentations and. Um, and, and to find the ways, but um, uh, Spring Boot actually provides you very uh, well uh, defined ways. Uh, Spring Boot, like Spring Kafka, basically framework provides you ways how you can customize uh, a listener container. This is very good, like Sean said, for live coding. It's like stuff that you know I can show you like immediately in just yeah, like a, in a few few more minutes. Um, <laughs> And, uh, but in, in production code, uh, you might have a certain situations where um, this might not work because you need to do some customizing, additional logging, maybe doing some, some other things, which is, which is totally understandable. Um, <clears throat> now, we're creating new uh, uh, Kafka controllers since, since we have a web service. Um, Java class, we'll call it Kafka, uh, Kafka controller. And we're doing this stuff. Um, so essentially, we're going to be uh, listening this uh, REST endpoint. Um, this REST endpoint uh, will have a user and publish uh, um, the endpoint where we will be. See, oh, this, this. We will just doing this required arguments constructor. So the 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 um, real time refactoring. I'm refactoring my own crappy code. No, it's actually good code. I love it. it like there's no there's no crappy crappy code. I love every bit of the code that I write. Um, see, this is the cool thing. Uh, remember, we changed the schema, but we forgot to regenerate this. So as always, Maven verify, uh, and we will switch to who Maven, and we do refresh. So we will get this in a moment. So essentially simple. We're injecting our producer here, and uh, in, in this case, we're reading uh, the message. Spring will take care of the serialization of this message and injecting these parameters, um, the request parameters as a parameter on our method. And after that, we'll publish this into Kafka. All right, so I think we're good to go here. Um, and so a couple things now. The cool thing that you need to get Kafka somewhere, right? So there's a couple things here. Um, we're gonna, I'm gonna be using like a two approaches since we're talking about PKS and Kafka. I will show you local approach, um, and um, you can use uh, like Confluent Cloud approach, my personal favorite. Um, but also we will be doing this um, uh, PKS approach as well. Now, uh, when I was talking, remember I started my uh, my conversation about about Confluent Platform. 
oh, nice, they finally fixed it because like I was always going, okay, is it download or is it download? So essentially if you do downloads, it goes you to right um, thing. So they actually fixed this, that's pretty cool. Um, Confluent.io slash download. This is where you can grab the uh, uh, Confluent platform installation. Uh, in this particular case, uh, I can do self-managed, I can just do download for free, uh, deployment time, I'll just like do zip, email, um, no, I don't want emails and stuff, um, and uh, click download. I already have it on my computer, so let me show you quickly. So um, I already have this installed, and if I will do uh, things like or tr2 t what is it three uh three two yeah so we do have um multiple things yeah, i guess three one would be enough it's too deep we don't need to go deeper um so uh, in this installation this binaries uh some of the libraries uh logs and stuff but this is like complete platform. It has Kafka, it has Zookeeper, it has everything. So how I need to run this? So I need to go to this directory. So I do uh, Confluent, uh, Confluent Home, go to Bean, um, go to say like a start Zookeeper, um, or Zookeeper server start. No, I'm not gonna do this because like it's just too much work, right? So only thing when I do is just to go here and say, hey, I want to run the platform. I want to run everything. And I want to like now, CNFL, which is, um, which, uh, which CNFL, it's just my, my, my alias because it types too much like, uh, like Sean uh, do, does with K, which, we might have a conversation about how to pronounce it, right? Because I have different idea how to pronounce it. <laughs> so essentially, yeah. All right, so uh, CNFL local, because it's my local platform, I'll just start. And I don't care. Because uh, Confluent knows like what kind of components will be there. It knows that Zookeeper needs to go first because Kafka still, unfortunately, depends on Zookeeper. So we start Zookeeper first, next we start Kafka. Now I need to bring Schema Registry because I'm using Avro and stuff. So I will be, I will be doing these kind of things um, in a few more seconds. So good thing about the Schema Registry and all other components that they don't depend on anything except Kafka. For that matter, you can think about Kafka as like a database because um, like a schema registry, Kafka streams and some of the connectors, they store data inside the Kafka, even though they will be uh, having some sort of like internal representation, memory representation of certain configs and blah, blah, blah. Essentially data stored there in Kafka. The cool thing that comes with platform uh, while it's starting, it also has a nice UI that you can use as a developer just like for free uh, until the end of the days. Um, and like I will show you in a bit how, how does it work. Now, while it's running, I use this opportunity to do uh, my favorite thing is renaming property files to YAML file. How many of you love YAML files? Okay. I don't, um, but like I think that for 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 matter of this uh, conversation, it's good to uh, to use YAML. Even though you can find uh, different examples um, that um, uh, we're not gonna use YAML here. Uh, so, so application property works fine. YAML just uh, simplifies a couple things. Uh, it's a good thing when you have a YAML that already uh, kind of sort of. Uh, you can copy paste because it's already well formatted. You don't need to uh, mess around with this one. Now, a couple things. Uh, Spring comes uh, with, uh, 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 again, predefined ways how things can be done, which is also I love because you can have a code separated from your config. If you remember, for example, let's do our consumer. Uh, no, okay. I think I didn't, I didn't fix this one here, so let me do this a little quick. Um, and a different one. Let's see, two, 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 Spring Kafka. And I will do consumer because I think it's here. Um, it's actually has this uh, pretty, uh, pretty cool, how it's called, uh, SPEL um, expression that allows me to inject this into my annotation. So in this case, topic name, I need to configure in, in one place. So the things, the topic name, topic name, so in this case, I don't need to do this anymore. Yeah. So you see, it's just uh, simplifying code line by line. 
uh, it will be injected topic name from here. Um, uh, partition number is three, replication factor is one. Since we're running this in local, just replication factor one. Next thing, um, I will be using this, uh, uh, the Spring Boot with the non-standard port simply because um, some of the components of Confluent platform actually using the same port 8080 or 8081, um, like the scheme registry, for example. Um, Kafka will be running here. Uh, see, my components are running here, so if I'll do Kafka, uh, Kafka Topics, which is command line tools that also come with, um, with Confluent platform, uh, some of the stuff already created. So if I will go here, 1991, this is where you can get this like a very nice, uh, very nice UI that's called Control Center. Um, the couple of things that I will show you in a bit and, and you'll see how you, you can use this uh, yourself. Um, and also schemas and some of the monitoring metrics and Control Center itself uh, runs this inside. Now, couple things. Here for our uh, configuration for consumer. This is a section that dedicated to consumer. Well, consumer reads data. When consumer reads data, it needs what? Deserialized data in, in, uh, in the format. Kafka stores data in the binary format. Kafka doesn't do deserialization on the server side. That's why Kafka doesn't suffer from garbage collection process because it doesn't store much on heap. So Kafka uses this approach called uh, uh, a zero copy that essentially streams the data, like binary data that comes on the socket, it streams directly to file. Technically it streams it to um, the page cache and the page cache after, will be flushed by operating system into the, um, into the disk. So that's why there's no deserialization. So data is always binary. But our application needs to make sense of this binary data, so that's why we need to deserialize it. Um, this is deserializer that comes uh, from uh, our packages. Um, this deserializer uh, is used the um, um, scheme registry, uh, the retrieve schema from scheme registry and deserialize it. Um, I want to see like how my application is working here, so that's why I'm using these monitoring interceptors in terms of I want to see the streams of data in my um, control center. Um, when I'm producing data, I also want to use the serializer and this stuff will be injected here. So essentially, when we do this, um, our, uh, so over here, the, the configuration will be injected and this uh, serializer will receive this user um, object to serialize into ever format. And this uh, user object actually, uh, should have a method two bytes or something like that bytes. Um, mm -mm -mm. Should be something like um, encoder, decoder, yeah, two buffer, two byte buffer. So. Um, uh, this uh, serializer that works with schema registry knows what kind of methods of this um, of, of this like big uh, big ever object to invoke in order to serialize again. As I remember when I said when you generate the schema out of it, this file, this Java class that we get is self sufficient. It will have only one dependency is on ever jars, and essentially this is where um, um, this individual object knows how to serialize itself. It deserializes. Uh, okay. Now, uh, let's run this and see if it will work. Mm -hmm. Will work. So, ch -ch compiles. Spring Boot is always nice. It's always good. Okay, all right. So, we see a bunch of information, but the most important information that you want to see is when the Spring uh, initialized the different uh, clients. So, we see that we connected to where we connect to screen registries on the local. Um, we do have, uh, where's the bootstrap server? Something like the string serializers monitor. Yes, yeah, so this is bootstrap server here. Um, and uh, if we go in here and say consumers, We'll see a couple things. See, this is a simple consumer that we just created in um, in uh, here. Where is the consumer? Simple consumer. This is consumer group ID that we specified. Um, I'm not gonna like dig into very deep into uh, consumer groups uh, concept, but um, essentially it is the how it is how the the Kafka scales uh, reads and writes of the. Um, 
basically reads. Um, and we see, like right now, there's a uh, three consumers that uh, created for per each partition. So it was handled by uh, underlying uh, Spring. So let's see uh, if something will change. If we'll do something like curl. Okay. So essentially, uh, this is something that I can submit. This is my name. This is H33, which is not right. It's already been a while. So, okay. So went through what we will see here. First of all, let's see if we have any errors in our Spring Boot. Yay, we do have some errors, no? Uh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's the wrong window. <sighs> A couple things. So, uh, we produced message and we consumed message. So, we need to see something like producer produced message because we were um, submitting this data from producer config. I don't see it. Where is it? Logger. Producer logger. Yeah, so producer logger. So this is what uh, uh, our uh, web, uh, web interface uh, wrote down. And this is what we get from how we consume this message. Now, uh, let's see if we can see this data inside the topic users. Topic users. Let's see if we have any messages here. Um, so Kafka remembers. Even though the, the, the control center doesn't know or was not there when the message was produced, uh, we can always navigate back and forth and uh, say we want to go to partition zero and uh, see if we have any, any data there. So we kind of like, res I reset the offset. Uh, let's see if it's different partition. Yeah, because it was using different um, key, so it lands in the partition number one. So my message uh, was here. And this is key and value. The cool thing is that you can also introspect schema. Uh, this schema was inferred from the message. Actually, binary payload of the message has this like a magic byte. And this magic byte defined the schema ID. So the control center went to scheme registry and retrieved this stuff from the, um, from the scheme registry. Same way as, <clears throat> as any application can do that. So simple thing that uh, uh, reads data from web, Writes data in the Kafka, reads data from the Kafka. Now, let's do um, let's do some some interesting things. So let's uh, let's deploy it to um, let's deploy it to, to to PKS. Now, what kind of config we need to have there? Uh, I will, for that matter, I will steal a. Where is my Kafka? Kafka? Ever? Yeah, yeah, this guy. And it does have this uh, cloud YAML. Okay, we'll just copy. Um, you can grab this uh, cloud YAML from um, from the GitHub because it's not in. Um... So a couple things here. So uh, since we're running this in. Um, in a multi-tenant environment, so we have uh, many people in the room, but we have only one Kafka for us, it's fine, Kafka will handle. However, um, so we'll not step on each other's toes. Uh, we can prefix this um, with, uh, uh, with name. Though, if you want to <laughs> uh, spice up things a little bit, just have it users and see if you will be receiving messages that were produced from a different person and you'll have a, like a real world uh, live web services communicating in the same room. Um, in other things that instead of like hard coding this, um, instead of hard coding this uh, stuff over here, um, we do have these uh, uh, things that will, will be injected from, um, 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 from, from PKS. So in this particular case, uh, these uh, VCAP services will be injected. This, this is the name of my service called CP, stands from the Confluent platform. Uh, we will be injecting credentials for the brokers and uh, credentials for a scheme registry. Also, uh, in order to connect, we need to use the JAS config that also comes from this um, this type of thing. So where we can get those? Uh, again, this is uh, everything that you need. It is in your, it is in your, how you call it? Uh, GitHub. It's in my GitHub, but like if you clone it, it will be your GitHub. Uh, 
Okay, so I'm doing this. How I can do command V? No, different one. A copy JSON, paste. Okay. Um, so we will keep this running for some time if you want to play around this at home. So this stuff will be available. Um, so a couple of things is here. Um, some people actually complained when we introduced the operator and that there is no kind of like a plain, there's no no security ways how to do this. I think it's a, actually a good thing we start, we, we, we're trying to evangelize the idea of uh, security that is important. So that's why like some of the things that we do, like at least don't use um, just empty passwords. So in this case, we'll have this uh, kind of like a SAS, SAS, SAS uh, what's the, but like um, if you didn't create the service, uh, uh, all right. Uh, this is my uh, my organization on PKS. Uh, where is my sandbox? And there should be service. I already have a user provided service defined. Um, if you don't uh, have it here. Uh, this is how you do this. You switch to GitHub. There's a um, you create this user provided service from the particular for JSON file. So this is our JSON file. Um, next thing, um, let's see if we do um, Maven verify. Let's keep test. Yep, this is our guy. And another thing that we need to have here is a file manifest.yaml uh, already exists because it's a naturally wrong wrong folder. Let me just copy it just to, to speed things up a little bit. Tin, 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 tin. Okay, we do copy this guy. All right. There's a bunch of things that uh, we don't need right now. I think I can just remove this for now. We don't need this yet. Uh, let's call it Avro Live because I was just typing this and see if it, this will work. So a couple interesting things in this manifest. We, um, uh, you already seen this manifest today. I uh, shown showed you a couple things here. Um, as I learned uh, today, that I need to specify this uh, the build pack. In this case, I can speed up my deployment, and it's always a good thing that um, you can disable this kind of auto discovery in production, things like that. Uh, memory, I'm specifying what kind of service I will be using because I need this uh, service to connect. Now, this is actually a pretty cool thing that um, the first of all, the Spring Boot allows you to uh, have a different configuration uh, based on. Um, certain environment variables. It's called the profiles. Um, and uh, even though cloud is a, a kind of like a conventional default profile that uh, will be used if default is not uh, available, I guess always will be used cloud, right? So it's not even using default. But, but it matters. So um, in, in this case, we're using cloud. Another thing is that, um, so when you package your application, you do like uh, Maven verify the Kubernetes jar, and uh, Spring Boot actually um, can go and find um, the, the main method. Sometimes when you have a, sometimes when you have an application um, that might have multiple main methods, like in my example, like why I did this, that's just because I wanted to, uh, because I was lazy enough to create multiple modules and it was easy enough. I also discovered how I can run this uh, stuff. So potentially uh, there is a uh, Spring Boot uh, properties launcher that allows me to specify what kind of class to load. So, which is something that you probably, I think it's quite useful information in my opinion. Um, you, you might think otherwise, I don't know. Um, so we do no start. I'll just uh, compile application. It will uh, send my jars into internet. Um, I'm getting this new comedic gecko. I guess this is uh, my uh, spiritual, spiritual animal now, comedic gecko. Um, Next thing is that we're binding our application. So in this particular case, it's going to be Avro live, right? So we just uh, typey typey. 
Okay, and let's see if we will be able to start this uh, live thing. All right, so we see in the build pack and things like that is getting compiled. We're getting Java, we're getting JDK, uh, all uh, cool stuff that uh, we need to run this. I think this is very cool, um, the productivity approach, even though like my code doesn't show anything or there's no docker file nothing uh, i still uh, using build packs i still will be able to like generate deployable thing which is container thing um, i think it's a, it's a pretty uh, pretty cool thing to have in my opinion because like i already like shared with Sean like earlier like i'm when i when i talking to people about this this kind of stuff there's always something that there's always couple miles until the place where I left them. Like I showed how you can write your Kafka Streams application. I show you how you can write Spring Boot application. But there's something that's like one less step that allows you to build this stuff and bring this to production so you can show your boss that you're doing some, some cool things, not just a, you know, um, the, the look into the black screen. And I think this is the great, um, great like last, last mile where you just need to bring stuff here. Oh, and it breaks. It's pretty cool. Let's see. So uh, um, we can use this uh, uh, command line tool, or we can see this in uh, in UI. So particular thing class uh, class not found exception. So Kafka workshop ever probably uh, I put in. This is what you're having when you do uh, copy pasting. This is um, it's a good stuff. So in this particular case, we go in here, which is in application, we do copy reference, and after that, we put this main file here. So developer, Kafka workshop, Kafka workshop application, because it uses Avro and stuff, so that, yeah. So, and we fix the manifest, we fix the manifest, and uh, that should be good to go. Um, we even verify, we skip tests, because, oh, while building, and I'm sk skipping the test, I will do some of the promotion here. Um, how many of you heard about Kafka Server? Yeah. Right. People, beautiful people. <laughs> so essentially Kafka Summit is this, uh, uh, it's a pretty cool event that uh, we're doing uh, with, uh, with community, with uh, developers. Uh, I'll do just, just CF push, CF push. Um, and uh, so we're doing Kafka Summit London in April, but uh, this year Kafka Summit uh, North America we're actually doing in Austin. Like Austin is amazing. Um, though like last year we did in New York, I'm kind of a little bit sad that we're not doing this year in New York, but I'm happy we're not doing this in San Francisco anymore. Um, so Kafka Summit Austin, we just started this. If you have an interesting uh, Kafka story, you have something to tell about like how you use Kafka, what kind of things you develop with Kafka. We have an open um, a call for papers. So essentially you can go there, um, submit your proposal. Uh, before you're doing this, uh, you go in uh, into the Confluent uh, YouTube channel. It's uh, youtube.com slash Confluent. And you find the video from Tim Berland where he's talking about how to write good proposal. Um, this is good stuff. And um, once you write the good proposal, submit this Kafka Summit. Uh, as a, if you will get accepted, you'll get a free pass, which is also cool. You can go and hang out with, uh, as, a, as a speaker. If you want to come, uh, but you don't have anything to say, you want to just learn. Um, there's a secret code, this is why I'm not gonna say this out loud. I'm just typing, you know, it's kind of like a Russian mafia style. Now you have it. Uh, you can use this code to get, uh, nope, 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 nope. Now it's in the internet. Yeah, like this, yeah. So you can get a 30% off. While I was doing this promotion, why I was telling this to you. See, I'm say saying, come on. I'm saying skip test true. And the reason why I brought this up, because I will be talking about testing and how you will actually will write uh, the test, uh, test driven application for Kafka, Kafka Streams, KSQL DB, and other stuff. So uh, stay tuned for that. Now, now we do have this uh, route that we can hit and get some of the data. So in this particular case, I do have a 
utility. Okay, I will just need to go and uh, essentially replace CF, uh, not CF, curl, 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 doing this one. And uh, just see. Okay, we, we went to do something. Now, I do, uh, let me show you, there's a control center actually in, in uh, there's even control center deployed in, um, in PKS that allows you to, uh, to log in. So, uh, admin developer one, so I will be able to log in here. Um, should be able to see my topics. Oh, hey, users. Uh, topic. Let me see if, if I changed anything in my configuration file. So in this case, uh, cloud. Yeah, Victor users. So we need to look for Victor users, if it's actually there or not. Oop, going back. And yay, Victor users. Topic here. So meaning that my application is actually doing something. Um, let's do, let's see if we have any data there. Oh, no messages. How come? Hey. What's that? Mm. 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 Live demo, what do you want? It's a, it's, it does work. Uh, it's it's de it's deployed. It's already started, so I'll do logs. So if topic was created, so meaning that it was connected, so it has, ah, look at that. We're getting some of the connections. Maybe, maybe, maybe our uh, yeah, my the interceptors. Why? Trust me, it it worked. It worked on my laptop before, it worked. The good thing that I have working application uh, deployed in GitHub. So um, this is good stuff, uh, you can try this one. Last thing that I want to show you before we go to like do a uh, happy hour thing. So um, I will show you in, uh, in a different, uh, in different window. I, I'm not gonna write this, I'll just, uh, I'll just show it to you. So the, even though uh, Spring, uh, Spring, uh, Spring Boot, and uh, uh, Spring Kafka uh, provides you some of the abstractions. Uh, those abstractions are still very tied into the things around Kafka. So Spring Cloud Streams a framework provides the way how you can abstract the logic from underlying transport. And one of the ideas uh, for for this project was that it really doesn't matter what kind of underlying transport you have there. You can have a, the JMS, you can have a Rabbit, you can have half, uh, Kafka, but you can write some of the uh, logic, and after that, using concept of binders, just like uh, connect things around. So it's it's like it's like dependency injection for your infrastructure. So. Um, couple things. I'm using this um, uh, this concept of binders in my uh, Kafka Streams application. So th this is where I'm focusing on just the Kafka uh, Kafka Streams here. So I'm just specifying that uh, I need to get my input, and uh, this is where my output will be, and this is. This, uh, the topic information and all underlying APIs will be injected here. So I only focus on the processing part. So in this particular case, when the message will arrive in the user's topic, it will be passed to this processor where I can filter if the age is less than 40, I will apply this like uppercase transformation and send this into the filter topic. So on the filter topic, I'll get some of the data around um, like uh, the the filtered thing. So, um, and the rest of the things uh, Spring Cloud Streams will handle. So if we'll take a look on this one. So this is where we specify uh, the binder configuration. And we specify that um, this is uh, uh, for keys we're gonna be using uh, by default, like we're assuming that everything is gonna be strings. And by default for as a value, we assuming every, every value will be our um, ever object. Now, 
And the uh, rest of the stuff, we're specifying some of the configs. This is a very important point here. By default, uh, Spring Cloud works very well with uh, JSON. So if you payload Java, creating Java objects, and uh, this would be automatically serialized as a JSON. So in order to uh, binder pass this pass uh, the, the serialization uh, responsibility to Avro serializer, deserializer, we need to specify this use a native decoding true and for producer as well. So in this case, it will be using Avro. Um, so out of the box experience is pretty nice in terms of like once you figure out that you know this kind of like building blocks and this is like dependencies injection will take the um, take the things. The um, this is how you define uh, in the code and this is where you actually you know writing your code. Um, how to deploy this? Um, I already mentioned that this application has everything. So the My Manifest actually contains two sections. It's, it contains one application that is interactive. So sometimes you have a front end, you have UI, where you have a, uh, all users will go there, or maybe like a mobile application will go through the API. So this is where our API going. So we're producing some of the data, uh, writing data in the Kafka, and done. This our application is self-sufficient. This application's sole responsibility is to collect user input. Next thing, in order to process, we have some background task. In this particular case, this uh, Kafka Streams a part of this application is actually doesn't have any UI here. So it is kind of like a daemon type of application that constantly listening uh, Kafka topic and does some processing as data arrive. So in this case, we have a two microservices. One microservice is interactive, another one is not. And um, even though they're part of the same jar, it will be deployed as a two separate applications inside, uh, inside my uh, pass, inside my, uh, inside my, where is it? Uh, if I'll go back, uh, where is, how can I go back? Confluent sandbox, and uh, which is my to uh, do, do. Oh, this is our live version, still working. Um, so this is a version of application that has route. This application doesn't have route, though you still can do uh, uh, same things as we uh, we discussed uh, earlier. You can see logs, you can see all these kind of things. Um, uh, it's still there. We see what kind of build packet uses and whatnot. All right. So it was. Very fast uh, paced thing. Again, three things that you need to remember from this conversation. Uh, you want to be in production, and your production is most likely going to be Kubernetes in the next couple of years. Um, this is what happens. I don't know. Like uh, either <laughs> either your organization will get Kubernetes, or you will change and will go to different organization. You will get the Kubernetes. It's kind of like like. It's, it's uh, probably it's a good thing. Um, second thing is that like if you're starting your deployment, do not or oh, starting your applications, do not uh, reinvent the wheel. Go to start.spring.io. Um, most likely dependencies and the right versions and all these things already are in place. And the third thing that uh, you need to know and uh, things where, where you want to go is developer.confluent.io. This is where you learn all things stream processing. You will learn all things around Kafka. You will learn things for Connect. Uh, you learn things for Cloud, I guess. Uh, something, something else. Um, so the all stuff here. So we have a link to our uh, community if, if you want to go um, the join a meetup. Uh, I'm helping to run New York Kafka meetup here. Um, and uh, we do have a Slack. If you don't have enough Slacks, we do have Slack. Um, so yeah, to check this out. And once again, I will put this uh, here. Uh, so you can have this, um, the playbook URL. Um, the Sean doesn't tweet a lot. I do tweet. Follow me on Twitter, please. This is my Twitter handle. Um, and also, you can send me email if you have any questions around Kafka and Confluent. Um, this is my my email. Uh, thank you so much for your time. And I guess uh, we ready for for fun part. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So yeah, don't hesitate to ask any questions. I'll stick around. And um, thank you.